Welcome to a new Team CGC 9.8 video. So today I want to talk about some affordable 1970s CGC 9.8 comic books that you can invest in. And I say affordable because, you know, once you get into the 70s, these 9.8s, they get really expensive. Yeah, they're, they're pretty rare, tough to find in the 9.8. Like, you know, like an Incredible Hulk 181 in the CGC 9.8, biggest 70s key around, first appearance of Wolverine. But that one's going to set you back, I, I think about $30,000 right now in the CGC 9.8. So that's a little bit outside of my budget, clearly, but um, there are still some pretty fantastic investment grade CGC 9.8 comic books from the 70s that you can still get at an affordable price, although pretty expensive still, but uh, for a 70s 9.8, pretty affordable. All right, uh, so I got it down here into a short list of seven, plus some honorable mentions, so uh, 15 CGC 9.8s from the 1970s to talk about today. All right, first one on the list, one of my favorites. It's an Uncanny X-Men 121, or X-Men 121, depending on how you want to call it. Uh, so this one, it's the first full appearance of Alpha Flight. You get a fantastic cover by Dave Cockrum and Terry Austin on this one. And yeah, Dave Cockrum always giving those classic X-Men vibes when he's in on a, a cover, an X-Men cover. So I really like this cover. First full appearance of Alpha Flight. It's not super, super rare in the 9.8, um, it being a 1979 book, like just kind of getting into the 70s. So that kind of keeps it, you know, decently affordable for what you get with a great cover, first full appearance of a classic superhero team that, yeah, Alpha Flight's got some potential. Like, you know, it's definitely one of the superhero teams that, you know, hasn't had movies made of them or anything like that. So there's still that possibility of happening, that happening in the future. Uh, there's 319 CGC 9.8s in the blue label for an X-Men 121. Some of those being off-white to white pages. Yeah, once you get into the 70s, you know, um, a lot of them end up being off-white to white pages. Uh, I do kind of recommend just to go for the white pages. Like, the off-white to white usually isn't that less of price. So oftentimes it's just better to pay like, oh, like 20 to 40 bucks more and get the white pages, you know, great looking, kind of perfect copy, I guess. But uh, 319, 9.8s in the blue label. So I would imagine probably maybe 250 of them are uh, white pagers. Uh, 9.8 ratio, 12.6%. So of all graded copies, 12.6% of them are CGC 9.8s. That's a pretty great rarity, although once you get into the 70s, a lot of the books end up being single digit 9.8 ratio. So the lower the better on these 9.8 percentages. But 12.6, not too bad. And that's what kind of keeps it somewhat affordable. Uh, so Go Collect has this one at $775, the Go Collect fair market value. But I saw a nice white page one um, on eBay sell in an auction for a $913. I think that's where, like the Go Collect, that fair value is probably sort of an off-white to white, maybe not the best centered looking copy. We'll kind of go for $700, $750. But uh, I do see these ones looking really good in the White Pages new case going for close to, I think I saw one go for a thousand bucks once. Um, so yeah, if you can get it closer to 775 though, this book makes a lot of sense. Yeah, big first full appearance, lots of potential with Alpha Flight as I mentioned there. So uh, X-Men 121 is definitely a 70s book to consider. Yeah, hopefully closer again to about 750, let's call it in the CGC 9.8 and do recommend the white pages as well for most of these for sure, for all of them pretty much. Okay, uh, next one on the list is a Daredevil 158. Yeah, this is the first Frank Miller Daredevil art and a fantastic cover too, I think. Just this is probably the best cover of his whole run as well. So his first art with the best cover. Yeah, just looking awesome this book. Uh, this is a well collected one. I've sort of saw these throughout the years and have put them on my watch list and kind of things like that in, in the 9.8 white pages. And they sell pretty quick. Like there's a lot of big Daredevil fans out there and Frank Miller fans. So put the two and two together. This one's really collected. It's a 1979 book. So um, yeah, still somewhat affordable, I guess. Uh, 159 CGC 9.8s in the blue label. So yeah, these first two are pretty good where there's you know over 100 in the 9.8 out there so you can you know you can find them they're attainable which is nice 
159 of a Daredevil 158 in the blue label, 159 9.8s. Uh, 7.5% the CGC 9.8 ratio. Yeah, so a nice single digit 9.8 ratio. It's more rare than X-Men 121, the one we just talked about in the 9.8. So of all graded copies, 7.5% of them are CGC 9.8s. So yeah, a nice low single digit 9.8 ratio for Daredevil 158. Uh, interesting, on um, uh, eBay, I saw an auction in an old case one go for, uh, it was a $496 in a CGC 9.8 white pages old case. That's, I think that's a steal. Yeah, sometimes, yeah, in auctions, some of these more underfollowed keys can really go for good prices, I think. I think that's a really good price. Go Collect has it at $700, the uh, fair market value. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was a Go Collect. Uh, so kind of 500 to 700. I think this one, you know, hopefully you do get it closer to 500, but um, in a white page is looking great. I think if you got a long-term time horizon on this one, there's huge cults of fans behind uh, Frank Miller and Daredevil. This is a big key of the era. So um, yeah, hopefully closer to 500, maybe even, you know, and in, pay into the 600s for a really nice looking one in the CGC 9.8 white pages in a new case, just looking great. I think it's worth, uh, you know, 600 or over. Certainly if you're a Frank Miller or Daredevil fan. Yeah, Daredevil 158 in the CGC 9.8. Definitely a 1970s book in the 9.8 to consider. That's still somewhat affordable. All right, next one I touched on on a, a cold list video that we did a couple weeks ago. It's a really cool one. Uh, Detective Comics number 471. This is, yeah, the first modern appearance of Hugo Strange. So big kind of uh, Batman villain, first modern appearance. That's a lot of how these Batman villain appearances go because a lot of their first appearances were in like the 40s and the 50s. So um, this is the first modern Hugo Strange, a pretty cool looking cover. Uh, decent, a really great price, I think, for what you get on this one too. Um, yeah, there's 23 9.8s out there. So on the blue label, a one of 23. Amazing Batman collector item, I think. 16.1% uh, the 9.8 ratio, you know, not too rare for a 70s book looking at the 9.8 ratio, but there's hardly none graded, so it's more just about the 1 of 23, really. Uh, this is a 1977 book, too, so getting into the 70s there. Uh, interesting with this one, I mentioned it on that last uh, Cold List video where I talked about this comic book. There was one for $399.99, CGC 9.8 white pages. Um, you know, in a new case, it was probably newly graded. Uh, and I had saw that one doing on eBay for sale, doing the research for that last video, which was about a month or two ago. Uh, I didn't pull the trigger and it sold the next day. Like it, it instantly sold. I think it might've even sold before I posted the video. Um, but uh, at $400, a Detective Comics 471, a one of 23 in the 9.8. If you're a Batman fan or a Hugo Strange fan, that I think is a fantastic price. So if you can, if you want this one and you can get it around 400 in the 9.8 white pages, I think that's pretty much an insta buy. I'm kind of hitting now, sort of just hitting myself uh, for not just grabbing this one. Yeah, I just love my Batman villains, and I think this one's just a really cool underfollowed key to consider in the 9.8 from 1977. So definitely fits on a affordable 1970s 9.8 list. Okay, next one's a big key that uh, is still affordable in the 9.8. I think it's a really great investment grade book. It's a Marvel preview, number four. Yeah, the origin and first appearance of Star-Lord. Yeah, the leader of the new Guardians of the Galaxy. So uh, Marvel preview number four uh, is a magazine. So pretty cool, I think. These magazines are really cool. I have one magazine in the CGC 9.8, my Vampire Tales. And they're pretty cool to have, just something different in the collection. Uh, but you definitely get the first origin and first full appearance of Star-Lord in this one. He's on the cover looking awesome. This one's from 1976. There's uh, 88 CGC 9.8s out there, so less than 100 in the 9.8. A really cool collector item. 7.8% the 9.8 ratio. Single digit 9.8 ratio. This one's 1976. You know, it could be lower maybe, but I think that's what, you know, somewhat keeps it a decent uh, price for a book this old. Because uh, in the 9.8, uh, Goldclex got this one at $1,800. So, you know, you get a great first appearance and there's only 88 of these, so it's going to be expensive. It's an old, it's a really old book. But um, for $1,800, Origin and First Appearance of Star-Lord, I think that's a pretty great buy. Yeah, that's um, uh, at that price. It's an investment grade book, but I think that makes sense. And, uh, you know, Star-Lord, there's certainly one more movie 
to uh, go with the Guardians of the Galaxy series. And I've always said, like, because um, what, whatever the actor's name that does the Star-Lord, I forget right now for some reason, but drawing a blank on that. But if they ever wanted to maybe go with, like, a standalone Star-Lord movie, possibly after these Guardians of the Galaxy movies, I think that's possible because the actor does a really good job kind of thing. So... You know, maybe they continue on with Star-Lord. But if not, a big first appearance, a perfect book. There's only 88 of these. This is such a cool collector item. Certainly, if you're a Guardians of the Galaxy's fan, to consider. Yeah, Marvel Preview number four in the CGC 9.8. Yeah, still somewhat affordable 1970s book to consider. Okay, next one is a classic. Yeah, it's a Star Wars number one here. And we're kind of pushing that limit of being affordable. But these are old books, and uh, Star Wars is so classic. So uh, Star Wars number one from 1977, uh, you get all the classic first appearances in there. And right now it's kind of hot to be honest with um, The Mandalorian like just coming out this weekend and Star Wars hype really does seem to be uh, peaking. Um, so you know this might be one to maybe be a little bit patient, patient on. You might not want to run out there right now, but on a 1970s sort of somewhat affordable 9.8 list, you gotta have a Star Wars number one. Uh, 637 9.8s out there in the blue label. And that's, I think, been the knock on it. This was really popular when it came out. Star Wars was so popular back then. So there's a lot of these, uh, even in the 9.8, a lot for a 70s book. However, there's a lot graded, so a 7.2%, the 9.8 ratio. So you still get a nice single digit 9.8 ratio. This is just one of the most popular 70s books, so there's going to be a lot graded and a lot in the 9.8. But a pretty nice uh, uh, single digit 9.8 rarity, absolutely. Interesting with this one, because uh, you know I grabbed mine, I almost wish I grabbed another one. Mine was about 925 bucks uh, about a year and a half ago, two years ago now maybe. Um, and I always thought, you know, there was a lot of kind of hate for Star Wars at that time, and I just thought, you know, Disney owns Star Wars. Star Wars is such a big brand. Like, they're gonna come back at some point. Like, Disney's got the billions to keep trying <laughs> over the next 10 to 20 years. So at some point, Star Wars is gonna come back. So, yeah, 925, it's a great one. But now, uh, Gold Clex got the fair market value at 1,600 in the CGC 9.8. So 1,600. Uh, you hear occasionally on Instagram people paying $2,000 for this one right now And I think that's a sign of the times like sometimes even go collects behind on Like some of the hot books that are kind of peaking in price because of some promotion or whatever And I think that's what's happening with Star Wars 1 right now like some are kind of selling right around the $2,000 mark But I think if you're patient here a little bit you get one closer to 1500 this is a really great collector item, I think. Yeah, first appearance of like Darth Vader, Luke Skywalker, like all these classic characters. Uh, the movie adaptation. And one thing too, uh, like I'm pretty sure the movie adaptation came out before the movie as a part of the promotion before the movie came out. So even though it's a movie adaptation, it really is kind of the, a true sort of first appearance um, in comics or in pop culture of you know some of these Star Wars characters because it came out before the movie as part of the promotion. So one small positive maybe, because a lot of people are like, oh, it's a movie adaptation. Like I don't really care for it. Like it's not really the first appearances because the first appearances were on the movie. But this came out before the movie. They kind of knew what the movie was and made the comic book and it was a part of the promotion. So interesting, but Star Wars number one, huge brand in the perfect 9.8 white pages. I get a lot of pride of ownership of having. This is one I show a lot of people because a lot of people Friends of mine are just Star Wars fans, and to bring this out and just be like, yeah, check this out. <laughs> I've gotten some uh, wide-eyed good responses uh, uh, from doing that. Okay, next one here, 1970s comic books to consider in the CGC 9.8, somewhat affordable ones. Pushing this uh, somewhat affordable here, an Iron Fist number 14. Yeah, I wanted to include this one. I don't think I've ever touched on this one, but this is still a borderline affordable 1970s CGC 9.8 to consider. First appearance is Sabretooth, really cool cover on this one, Iron Fist 14. Yeah, it's really one to consider, certainly if you're like a Sabretooth Wolverine fan, if you just really are, always have like their kind of feud. Uh, in the 9.8 blue label, 177 in the CGC 9.8 blue label, not too bad, a one of 177. First appearance of Sabretooth, this is a pretty old book. This is a popular one too. There's a lot of them graded. So uh, the 9.8 ratio, 4%. So of all graded copies, only 4% of them are CGC 9.8. So this is the lowest and most rare 9.8 on this whole list. 
So uh, that is, yeah, that's pretty interesting. It's nice and rare. Um, it, if we talk about price for Iron Fist 14, it being pretty rare, it is over $2,000, 2,200 GoCollex got the fair value. Wasn't seeing any sort of uh, sell on eBay. So I wasn't kind of seeing any completed listings myself, but go collect at 2,200. With that low 9.8 ratio, I really like this cover too. Like this is pretty collectible. Yeah, and if you're a Sabretooth fan, I I mean, this is definitely the one to get <laughs> first appearance. Yeah, like, but if uh, this is within your budget, uh, yeah, I kind of recommend this one with that really low CGC 9.8 ratio with a great cover. Hopefully around 2,200, maybe closer to 2,000 if you can swing that. But uh, I think if you got a long-term time horizon, given the rarity of this one, um, I think you'll do pretty okay. And uh, it's one I think you can certainly enjoy. Yeah, great cover. And a really rare one for in the 1970s. Iron Fist number 14 in the 9.8. One to consider, absolutely. Okay, last one on my personal list, and we'll uh, get through some uh, honorable mentions, hopefully a little bit quicker. Last one here is an Incredible Hulk annual number five. Yeah, this is a really cool one that I was lucky enough to pick up about six months ago in an auction. Thought, just kind of a, an opportunistic buy for me, because, uh, yeah, I thought, like, it's from 1976. Like, get yeah, a 1976 book, 9.8 white pages, looking so good, uh, was really cool. This one, it's the uh, second appearance of Groot. Now, you can maybe even think of it as, like, the first modern appearance of Groot, but we'll go with second appearance of Groot. There was two other appearances of Groot before this one. The one was his first appearance in the Tales to Astonish book, and then there was another one which was a, just a reprint, though, of his Tales to Astonish book. Um, yeah, I forget what that one is. I should have looked that up before. Uh, but um, this is basically his third overall appearance, but you know the first two were reprints of the same thing. So second appearance we'll go with maybe first modern appearance because that Tales to Astonish came out in, um, I think it was like si the early 60s, like 1960 or 1961. But uh, Hulk Annual number five, pretty affordable, second group, only 36 in the CGC 9.8 out there in the blue label. I think I thought, you know, I decided to really jump on the auction and be pretty aggressive too because I think, you know, there's no Guardians of the Galaxy movies right now, but there is going to be a third one. And like once that trailer kind of hits, like I'm sure this book could kind of heat up again. Um, we'll get into the price I paid because it's basically right around the fair value. 9.3%, uh, the 9.8 ratio, so a nice single digit, getting into the single digit 9.8 ratio. Not too bad for a 1976 book, 9.8. Uh, so GoCollect's got the fair value at 375. I uh, had a look at the completed listings. I'm not even seeing the one that I purchased on the completed listings anymore, but mine was uh, just over 400. Yeah, it was like 405 or 410 or something like that. So. And even at that price, I remember like, I think the fair value when I purchased mine was 290. So I bet really aggressive because I, there's a, it's a one of 36 and you know, it almost didn't really like, I was willing to pay like an extra hundred bucks just to get it now. I got a long-term time horizon. Like I just have a feeling, yeah, at around 400, it was still a great buy with that long-term time horizon. Cause yeah, with a one of 36, Groot being really popular, this is kind of, Second appearance, maybe first modern appearance, a really collectible book, I think. Uh, I could see this one being like six, seven hundred, yeah, um, in the CGC 9.8. So I thought around 400. It made sense. Uh, fair value right now, 375, right around that price, maybe even a little bit lower if you can swing that. I think this one is an absolute buy. Yeah, Incredible Hulk, annual number five, second appearance of Groot. Pretty cool cover and a one of 36. Yeah, so collectible. and. Still affordable, hopefully, under the $400 mark in the 9.8. All right, uh, some honorable mentions to get through. Those were the top seven. I will have a full list in the description below of everything if you want to have a quick look. Uh, next one here, though, is uh, Marvel, Marvel Presents number three. This is the first solo Guardians of the Galaxy book. There's uh, not a lot of these on the census in the CGC 9.8, but I, like, it was like almost a year ago now probably but i uh, saw one of these on ebay and i was watching it and it sold in like a day like it sold really quick and it was 399.99 in the cgc 9.8 and there's not a lot of 9.8s out out there of this book so the first solo guardians of the galaxy book marvel Pre presents number three if you can find it for right around that 400 dollar book and you're a big guardians of the galaxy fan this is definitely one to consider in the cgc 9.8 in the 70s Next one here, uh, Incredible Hulk 228. 
this one, I really like the cover on this one, and then you do get a pretty great first appearance. It's the first time uh, Carla Sofin uh, becomes Moonstone. So uh, it's not like the first Moonstone, but the first new Moonstone, pretty much. Uh, with the really cool Hulk cover. This is one, I think it's like 300 bucks. I think sometimes even a little bit less. So yeah, we'll call it kind of 250 to 300 maybe on this one. Uh, in the CGC 9.8 with the cool cover and kind of the first modern Moonstone, I guess we'll call it, I think is a, a Hulk book to consider that's uh, pretty affordable for the 70s. Next one, a big key. Yeah, I'm kind of pushing the affordability. Uh, An Amazing Spider-Man, number 194. Yeah, I wanted to include this one. If you're really serious about your Spider-Man books, uh, you can still get this one. Uh, it's getting right, at, just getting into the 70s. The first appearance of Black Hat. Uh, Go Collect's got the fair value at $2,050. And yeah, this one's probably certainly heating up with the 9.8 market doing pretty good lately. So. Because uh, normally I, I thought that you could definitely get this one around like 1,700, but that was kind of six to 12 months ago. So heating up a little bit, I think right around 2,000, maybe if even if it's a little over at this fair market value, like one of these sort of in a new case, even in the new stand would probably be, if you want to be picky about it, around $2,000 I think is, is a great buy. Pretty expensive, but if you're serious, um, yeah, Amazing Spider-Man 194 is a 1970s 9.8 to consider. Another one too here, um, getting even further back in the Spidey books, Amazing Spider-Man books, uh, number 149. This is the uh, first Spider-Man clone uh, appearance. And uh, this is a well-collected one by collectors. It's got that a cool eye appealing kind of red cover and classic cover, I think too. And in the 9.8, for it being such a really old book, getting into the 70s here, um, you, uh, Gold Class got the fair value right around 2000. And uh, yeah, I remember this one going for under 2000 as well. So this is kind of a key that's really old, an, a, a pretty old Amazing Spider-Man book that's still a key though. Uh, that you, yeah, I mean, somewhat affordable at 2000, but if you're serious about your Spidey books, kind of, I think those are the two kind of somewhat affordable 1970s books, uh, Amazing Spider-Man books that most collectors uh, zero in on. Yeah, uh, 194 and 149, the first Sp Spider-Man clone appearance. Uh, next two here are some of my favorite, uh, most eye-appealing Batman covers of the kind of early 70s, so they're still uh, pretty affordable in the CGC 9.8. A uh, Batman 291. Yeah, this is a great kind of villains cover. You got all the villains on the cover and apparently Batman dies or something, but a really cool cover. Uh, yeah, just classic to have all the villains on a Batman cover, I think. And this one in the 9.8, there's not a lot of them out there. It's one of those ones that's really tough to find, but if one does pop up, you can kind of get it, I think, for like 300 uh, about $300. Maybe even a little less, maybe a little more, depending on how lucky you are, but uh, Batman 291 is a cool villain's cover that I occasionally just keep my, my eye open for to see if one of the 9.8s pop up. There's not a lot of 9.8s, but um, uh, next one, very similar to that one, Batman 296. This is certainly my favorite Scarecrow cover of the era. Uh, in the 9.82, I'm pretty sure, like, because these two are the ones I kind of keep my eye out in the 9.8 of this generation that I would, if they popped up for a nice fair price, I would really be tempted. And uh, this one, I think, can even get closer to 200 if someone really kind of wants to get rid of one um, for uh, Batman 296. But, um, you know, maybe even up to 300 or over if you really want it. That's, I probably would pay it in a nice 9.8 white pages one. This is just a great Scarecrow cover. Yeah, I really like these two villain covers of the era for Batman books. All right, next one in the 70s, couple more honorable mentions. Uh, and, and, and X-Men number 109 I want to talk about here. Yeah, this is the first Weapon Alpha who's like the leader of Alpha Flight, Vindicator. I'm pretty sure this is uh, the first the time they ever talk about Weapon X, too. Uh, even though Weapon X like isn't in it, I don't think, like Wolverine's, yeah, it's, uh, but the first mention of Weapon X I, I heard. Uh, this one's really cool, though. This, uh, I think, you know, it's, it's kind of neck and neck with uh, Uncanny X-Men 121, I think. Uh, you know, I, yeah, I didn't look up prices for this one, actually, but in the 9.8, it's one to consider. I think it's right around $1,000. They might be creeping over 1,000. This is a little bit older than 121, certainly. So, uh, but definitely, you know, of the air, a lot of collectors focus on this one. Because, yeah, once you get into 9.8, it's a little bit older than this. The prices really get out there with like the first Star Jammers books. And yeah, some of the keys just get super expensive in the 9.8. 
X-Men 109, probably the last one in the 9.8 that you can kind of get around a thousand bucks, I'm pretty sure is the price. Uh, in the X-Men, like we had uh, touched on a couple other books lately. I'd, I could have included them easily on this list. Uh, X-Men 114, the first Uncanny on the cover. I really like that one. X-Men 117, the first Shadow King and uh, Origin of Professor X on 117. And yeah, 117 is like 300 bucks too. Like that's a really good one that's in the 70s as well. So yeah. The, all the X-Men's to consider there, but uh, focusing on 109. Okay, last one on the list is uh, definitely an affordable one, and uh, maybe not a key, but uh, kind of a cool one from the 70s that I see quite a bit. A Spectacular Spider-Man number one. Yeah, so not a first appearance in this one, just a pretty cool cover. It's an old Spidey book that you can get for a decent price, and it's a number one, so yeah, it's like a tarantula appearance, but it's not his first appearance. Uh, but Spectacular Spider-Man number one from 1976, and I did see an auction on eBay this morning, just doing the research. Uh, it ended at 205.50, so in an auction, looking pretty good too. 9.8 white pages for 205.50. Yeah, sort of anywhere I think around 200 uh, is a great price for this book. I think occasionally some will even sell for kind of 250 to 300, but right around 200. Uh, pretty old Spidey book, 1976. It's kind of a cool one to have. A Spectacular Spider-Man number one. All right, uh, that's the full list there. Yeah, 1970s books. I, I will have a, the full list in the description too if you want to have a look. But 1970s, they're really sort of appealing. Yeah, they're just, it's, it's a great feeling to kind of have. I know that Incredible Hulk annual number five that uh, I picked up, uh, a one of 36. Like to just get something so rare, like there's only 36 of these on the planet. Like that's just a, a cool feeling. And you get that a lot of these with these 1970s books. So I could imagine, you know, certainly if I was even, you know, maybe a little bit older and this era was more common to me, like it would just be really cool to focus on these late 70s books because, yeah, there's just not a lot of them in the 9.8. And, um, yeah, certainly a, a great era just to collect 9.8s. Hopefully it's still kind of within your budget. And, yeah, certainly <laughs> those Hulk 181, I'd really like to have a 9.8, but I don't think I want to spend that much on a comic book. And uh, props to anyone who does, though. Hell yeah, if you got the cash to uh, buy a Hulk 181 9.8. But a little bit out of my budget, and yeah, th this kind of video kind of came to mind, so I thought it would be pretty helpful. All right, uh, thanks so much for watching. If you haven't already, I would invite you to join the team and subscribe to Team CGC 9.8. Yeah, I'd love to have you on our comic book collecting and comic book investing team. Hit the bell for all the latest video notifications. Add me on Instagram and Twitter as well. All the links in the description below. But thanks again for watching. Uh, so thankful for all the support. And um, yeah, mention me on Instagram if you have any questions about whatever it might be. Love uh, having the talks with the team on Instagram. But uh, yeah, thanks again for watching. Hope you got some ideas and I'll see you on the next one.